So next up on our agenda is another one of those I don't know. I didn't know how, uh, oh, I, we're getting echoes here. I didn't know we could do that related to Adobe Acrobat. So we have uh, Corinne Gilroy, and Corinne, I, uh, you have uh, access rights, good. You can start loading your screen too. Um, Corinne Gilroy is the Access Services Manager at Mount St. Vincent University. Uh, she is also the editor of Partnership, the Canadian Journal of Library and Information Practice and Research. Um, she has an MAED candidate in, uh, she's an MAED candidate in MSBU's Lifelong Learning Program, and her thesis research focus, focuses on fair dealing and communities of practice. Um, so uh, without further ado, please take it away, Corinne. Uh, thank you. I should first ask, um, it, Skype is telling me that I'm presenting and that you can see my secondary monitor. Can you see my uh, screen share? Yes, we can see your screen okay. share. Great, okay. So rather than opening PowerPoint, I only have one slide really, uh, which is this one. So I'm going to very quickly run over this and then I'm going to show you how to do a few things in Adobe Acrobat that, um, that might help you make scanned documents a little bit more accessible. And I'll try to be as brief as possible. I know that our time is limited today. Oh no, we have um, some extra time built in, so. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll still try to, out of uh, courtesy f of, for everyone that's yeah. very patiently sitting there. So, um, so Adobe Acrobat, uh, most people know it as a software platform that works with PDFs, which is what it is, right? It allows you to create and edit PDFs. Um, but in my experience, one of the most powerful aspects of Adobe Acrobat is how um, accessibility for people who have print disabilities is baked into the software. There are so many utilities uh, and checkers and features and bells and whistles within Adobe Acrobat that allow you to make documents more accessible to people who either have limited vision or who have uh, print disabilities for other reasons. And I work with Adobe Acrobat um, as manager access services here at the mount overseeing document delivery and reserves so we you know we scan a lot of PDFs for students and faculty um, and as uh, as layout editor for the partnership uh, we're also trying to make it a, as much an accessible journal as possible so we we strive to make every single issue a little bit better than last one than the last one in terms of um, PDF accessibility, trying to think about what someone who's using a screen reader might need, and so on and so forth. So um, these bullet points here are, are the features that I hope to get to. I might skip a couple of them or spend more time on a couple of other ones, depending on the interest of the of the audience. Um, but the first thing I want to mention is that I, I wouldn't recommend scanning and working with a PD, working with a scanned PDF from a print document unless you absolutely have to that documents that are born digital, whether it's something you create in Word or um, a PDF that comes from a publisher, those are always much better to work with uh, rather than forcing something that's been turned into print back into being a, a digital entity. Um, and Microsoft Word actually has a really nice Adobe Acrobat extension. Charles didn't really mention this, I don't think, but um, I'm just gonna pull that up for a second and show you. So. Uh, so you guys should, should be seeing Microsoft Word on my screen now, is that, is that yes. the case? Yes, okay. So if you look at all the, the tabs at the top of the Microsoft, um, pardon me, the Microsoft Word menus, the furthest one to the right is Acrobat. So that's an extension that you can add if you have Adobe Acrobat on your computer. And I should uh, mention here as well that Adobe Acrobat Pro is different than the Adobe Reader, which is free. Adobe Acrobat Pro is paid <laughs> licensed software. Um, but this utility allows you to uh, get a few more accessibility features into Word that will work with Adobe Acrobat. And again, that's better for the, the documents that are born digital. They tend to be a little bit friendlier to people with disabilities. So, uh, a few of the tips that I want to go over with you for in Adobe Acrobat. The first one is that I always recommend scanning both pages of books and bound journals. I know some people tend to try to just squeeze one page of two onto your um, onto your flatbed scanner, um, and then you move the page around and so on. Whether you're print, uh, whether you're scanning right hand page or left hand page, but that actually um, 
you're making life a little bit more difficult for yourself when you're trying to make the document accessible later on. So I do recommend, um, if you if you're able, to fit the entire document onto your flatbed scanner and use a larger scanning area. So telling um, telling your scanner to scan to say a size uh, size B4 or size A3, some of these much larger. Um, kind of tabloid size pages to allow everything to fit on and then you can um, crop them later on and it looks much better. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, I recommend using clear scan OCR in Adobe Acrobat. I'll explain what that is. It's just there's two types of OCR in Adobe and one creates a, a smaller more compact file that has clear text and that's clear scan. Um, I always recommend uh, deleting the artifacts that show up in scanning. So whether it's a piece of dust on your scanning bed or a shadow or a scribble in the margin, those just create extra images that someone using a screen reader has to read through. Uh, so the, it's kind of like noise on, on a page. So it's always best to get rid of those in Acrobat Pro. Get, get rid of as many of them as possible. And you should be able to get rid of all of them as long as it's a clean document. If you have a um, if you're working from a book or a journal that has a lot of scribbles, underline, highlighting, uh, it may, you may be better off trying to find another copy rather than making that into something accessible. And I also would recommend setting page numbers so that it's not just say 1 to 12. If you're if it, this journal article, for instance, is pages 60 to 82, you can actually manually set those page numbers in Adobe Acrobat so that, say, someone with a print disability is trying to do citations for a research paper, they're actually getting uh, the correct page numbers right to them. And of course, you want to make sure you have alternate text for any images that you're working with so that someone doesn't just see, as the earlier presenters mentioned, they, they don't just hear in a screen reader um, what the name of the file is. They actually get a description of what the objects are in the picture just to get a sense of how the, how the il illustration might fit with the article. And uh, you, it's a good idea to turn section headings into bookmarks whenever you can so that it's easy to navigate through a document. I'll explain that in a moment as well. And uh, the reading order function is very powerful in Adobe Acrobat. So reading order allows you to kind of browse through the document and think how you would read it aloud to someone or how a screen reader would read it to you. What would you skip? What would you actually read? So for instance, uh, decorations on a page, like um, little flourishes that aren't central. I wouldn't be reading those or even mentioning them or paying much attention to them. And page headers, and I'm not just, I'm not talking about um, content headers, but say the page header in the top right hand corner that lists uh, the section name and the page number, you probably would skip over those because you see them on every single page. And that just creates redundancy when a screen reader is going over a page. So you can set Adobe, you can tell Adobe Acrobat to ignore those. Um, and you can tell that, and that way that's baked into the PDF so that when someone else opens up the PDF, um, they also get the, um, they also know to skip those. And there's an accessibility checker uh, in the background that will run over all of the features in Acrobat Pro that are baked in. And, it, and it's so detailed, it's, it can be kind of overwhelming, but you can run it as many times as you like and pick away at features and try to make your document as accessible as possible. It's very difficult to get to 100% perfection according to the accessibility checker. It's, it's very strict, but um, every, um, every extra checkbox you earn in that accessibility checker will make that document a little bit easier for someone else to work with. And there's also a Make Accessible wizard in, in Adobe Acrobat, which I recommend working with, but I wouldn't recommend just relying on it. It's good to learn to work with the features that the wizard is made up of, because it's made up of about, I think, 8 to 12 <laughs> features. So anyway, let's go look at uh, Acrobat itself, rather than uh, belaboring that point anymore. So just to show you what I'm working with, this is a scanned, can everyone see Adobe Acrobat now? Yep. Okay, so this is uh, a scan of one chapter from the book Canadian Copyright A Citizen's Guide. It's the chapter that I need for 
uh, the next part of my thesis that I'm working on. So what a coincidence. Um, I just happen to have this PDF kicking around. So this is um, a straight scan that I did on, um, I did this on our scanner here in the office yesterday. And it's, it's one of those multi, you know, uh, printer, scanner, copier, etc. that most people would have in their uh, library offices. And um, I, I made sure to include both pages on each scan, so I'm not moving it around and trying to squeeze it into a smaller, um, into a smaller uh, document size. And I'll show you what I'm eventually going to get to. So this one, it might take a second for you to load, but this is what we're eventually going for, which is um, a, a PDF where each page equals one page. And you can see that all the pages have been straightened out. There's no shadows. Uh, there, um, all the text reads, you know, perpendicular to the to the margins. And and I've removed artifacts and so on. And the one image that we have in this PDF is this funny little cartoon of Mickey Mouse being Adam. And I've added a caption: cartoon style illustration of an art gallery interior. Mickey Mouse takes the place of Adam in a painting similar to Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense until you read the chapter and you think about um, how important Disney has been to uh, the uh, lengthening of copyright over the years. So anyhow, I'm going to go back to the one that hasn't been edited yet. So to start from the beginning, um, once you have a scan document and you open it in Adobe Acrobat Pro, the very first thing that I always do is um, to look at, to actually duplicate all of these pages and then crop them. And the reason you want to duplicate them is that, of course, each scanned page contains two pages. And if you duplicate them all, then you can just crop all of the left-hand pages and crop all of the right-hand pages. And as long as you're careful in scanning and didn't skip or duplicate any pages while working on your scanner, it actually works beautifully. So to, uh, so to duplicate pages in Adobe Acrobat, you select a page, you press the control key on your keyboard, and you drag the page down, and you end up with a duplicate. And I'll very quickly go through and do this for all of them. So you click on the new page, press the control key, and drag down in between. And of course, this can get a little bit tedious if you have a longer document. But I found a way to do it reliably. If you select them all and try to duplicate them all at once, then you end up with two full sets, <laughs> one after the other, which isn't helpful to anybody. So now you can see we had eight pages to begin with, and now we have 16. And I'm going to go back to the top again. So you can see we um, page one is the same as page two, and that's really important. So what we're going to do is, um, is actually crop all of these. So there's a tool over on the right-hand menu. And uh, let's see if I can find it here. Hold on a second. I'm going to close this and open it back up. It's being a little fussy. Oops. Ah, I had the wrong one open. Sorry, guys. So uh, under Tools, you go to Pages, and then you click Crop. That's what I was looking for. I don't know why I couldn't find it for a moment. So we're going to crop all of the um, all of the left-hand pages first, and then all of the right-hand pages. And this is just lickety split. It's very easy. And then you get rid of all your shadows. You get rid of all your extra margins. If you end up with your your hand in the scan, this takes care of all of it. As long as you made sure to have a very straight scan when you're working with your document at the actual scanner. So we highlight uh, the very first left-hand page, click the Enter key, and that brings up uh, a menu, or pardon me, it brings up um, a menu to work with here, and we'll go down to uh, the bottom right-hand corner, and we'll, we'll want to apply this to all pages from 1 to 16, and we'll only be using the odd pages, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. 
So from pages 1 through 16, odd pages only, we're going to crop them exactly the way we did. So cropping uh, so that we only show the left-hand side, and we'll click OK. Now you should see, if, uh, if uh, Skype is cooperating, you should see in the left-hand side um, a, uh, all the thumbnails. You'll see a single page, double page, single page, double page, and that's exactly what we want to see. So now we're going to do all of the even pages or the right-hand pages. So we'll do exactly the same thing, tool menu, crop function, we'll highlight the right hand side, click enter. I have two monitors so this uh, this particular menu keeps popping up on the other monitor so that's why I'm dragging it over. And then we'll go from pages 2 to 16 and we will apply this crop to even pages only, 2, 4, 6, etc. Press OK and voila, we have um, a nice scan of every single individual page and we've removed that awful shadow at the bottom, that, that black um, gutter that you tend to get when you're scanning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now we can also get rid of excess pages. So sometimes you, you know, at the beginning either end or the end of your document you end up with a page you don't really need in the document. For instance, uh, here I wanted to include the title page of the book at the beginning of my scan so I don't forget which book I'm working with uh, for the sake of citing this work later on. Um, but that means that I pulled in, um, I pulled in a, uh, uh, I pulled in a little bit of a review. So I'm just going to click on that page and delete it. I don't need it. It asks me, are you sure you want to delete this page from the document? Yes, I am sure. So I have my title page. And then again, this was one page of the previous chapter, right before chapter five begins. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that page as well. So now this looks a little bit better. I have the title page and the chapter begins like so. And if we go down to the bottom of the document, we can check and make sure that everything's there. But you'll see some of them are crooked because of course when you're scanning it's hard to get um, the gutter of the page to go exactly flat and you end up with things that are crooked. And that's why it's important to um, start with doubles, um, start with two pages per page and then whittle it down to one page per page because if you, um, when, when, when uh, Adobe Acrobat is trying to render the optical character recognition in these documents, it will try to straighten them out, but it could end up making one page very straight and the other one very crooked. You'll often see uh, Adobe make the left-hand page very straight and then the right-hand page will be off on a 25 or 30 degree angle, which we definitely don't want. So once we have all these pages uh, looking beautiful, it's time to apply optical character recognition to this document. So um, again, from the right-hand menu under Tools, we'll go to Text Recognition and we'll click in this file. So that brings up a little menu that asks me if I want to um, perform optical character recognition scanning on one page, all pages, etc. So I want it on all of my pages. And I'm going to click the Edit button here. And that's where I get an option of either Clear Scan or Searchable Image. And uh, for the sake of this presentation, I wanted to actually be able to provide um, participants with an explanation of why ClearScan works better. I've always found that it worked better and I never knew exactly why because I just stumbled upon it by trial and error. But apparently what ClearScan does is actually replace the pictures of text with proper characters rather than just having this invisible text layer behind an image, which is kind of more old school OCR. So ClearScan replaces pictures of letters with letters proper. And so as long as you have, if, as long as you're starting with a good quality scan, you'll end up with a much better quality scan. And it means that there's less data in the end product. You don't have the pictures of images as well, or pardon me, you don't have the pictures of letters as well as letters, you only have the letters themselves. So you end up with a, a more compact file that's easier to, easier to email to people, for instance, and takes up less space in your storage. And uh, I think 600 dpi is just fine because ClearScan makes a smaller file, so it's usually perfectly manageable. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click OK again. And through the magic of uh, the internet, you should see some 
pages jumping ahead here, and that's actually just Adobe Acrobat performing OCR on each page, running through. It only takes a few minutes. If you have very large files, I would also recommend breaking them down. Sometimes it's easier to work with um, OCR in Adobe Acrobat if you break things down, say, if you're scanning an entire text for someone who has a disability, you might want to break it down every few chapters or so. Um, the longer it is, the longer this takes and the easier it is to make a mistake. Um, so now I'll run through each of these pages and you'll see that they've been straightened out quite a bit. Um, so I think the last couple were very, these two at the end were quite crooked before and now they're reasonably straight. Right? So. It's really nice that, uh, that that's thrown in there. So you're not just getting the text recognition, you're also getting the, the pages stand up straight, right? They've got a little better posture. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I like to do is actually get rid of scan artifacts if possible. So I'm going to go back up to, again, the right-hand menu, Tools, Content Editing, Edit Text and Images. So this is where you'll see, you may not be able to make it out in Skype, but there, I can see um, outlines of and a lot of these are artifacts that you do not need in your end scan. So if I'm hovering over this title page here, I can see a tiny image icon in the top left-hand corner of my page. I can click on this picture, quote unquote, that's hiding out in the background and just click delete and it removes some of the background noise. There's a little one here. I'm going to delete that one. A lot of it's, um, you know, catalogers marks, which depending on the purpose of your scan, you may wish to leave the catalogers marks there. Um, I'm going to leave uh, our library stamp down here in the corner. And I'll go look at the second page here. Now, of course, here's our picture of uh, Mickey Mouse subbing in for Adam in this Michelangelo painting. We want that because that's a meaningful image, right? But if I click behind it, there's some background noise hiding out again. And I can go through and delete these background artifacts just to make the page a lot clearer. I'm just gonna find a couple more and then I'll move on to something else. I'm not gonna make you sit here, Jimmy, click the delete button a hundred times. Um, so you can see the page is getting clearer and cleaner as we go, right? If there's less noise, it's going to make it a lot more attractive if someone's printing this off because of course uh, I know a lot of the students that I work with at the Mount, an accessibility feature for them is just being able to print a chapter and work with it on paper without distractions on a computer, to have nothing but the paper right in front of them. And one of the beautiful things about uh, these single pages is that when they print out an 8.5 by 11, there's so much real estate for note taking in the margins. Um, I, I've, I found that a lot of students have really enjoyed that and I myself prefer that as well when I'm doing research. So rather than going through that, I'll jump to the next, <clears throat> pardon me, the next feature, um, which is uh, page numbers. I think this one is so important. So you can see in, or you should be able to see, it might be kind of tiny, in the left-hand menu where we have page thumbnails, uh, that the pages go, go from one to 14. And of course, that doesn't accurately reflect what's happening in the book. If we look at uh, the third page of the scan, we can see it's page 72. So this chapter actually goes from page 71 down to 83. So we can clean this up a little bit and make it a bit more user friendly by clicking on the title page here. And we can set the title page with a fake number. So we'll go, we'll right click on the thumbnail for the title page and click uh, number pages. That brings up another menu that seems to always go into my other monitor. And for style, we'll select lowercase Roman numeral. So I, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And we'll start at one um, on the selected page. And just click OK. So now, again, it may be very tiny. That title page is just arbitrarily set as Roman numeral one. And now I'm going to click on the first page of the chapter, which we know is page 71. Again, I'll right click, uh, number pages. And for this one, rather than just the selected page, I'll go from page two to 14. So I'll, I'm selecting the rest of the pages and we'll want a regular, uh, a regular Arabic numeral style for this one, starting at page one 
and press OK. Oh, I ended up with an error. That's funny. I have page one, one. OK, hold on a second. What went wrong? I've just got a duplicate page in here that I want to get rid of. Page num number pages. Oh, that's where I went wrong. Um, so Adobe is too smart for me. Uh, it already uh, it was already discounting the title page. So I had started from 2 to 14, but I actually want to go from 1 to 14. So you have to be careful about that sort of thing. <laughs> so now uh, we have Roman numeral 1, and then it starts with Arabic numerals 1 through 13. Or we could uh, number pages from 1 to 14 starting with 71 to make it super accurate right Ooh. so roman numeral i and then 71 72 73 74 so much more accessible uh, and something that's very easy to do it literally you know takes 30 seconds to do that and let's see i've only got a couple more minutes so i'll be very quick here um turning section headings into bookmarks do i want to do that one Oh, I'll show you, before before I finish up, I'll skip ahead and show you um, the accessibility wizard. So there's, uh, see, there's an action wizard from tools on the right-hand side, action wizard. There's a, um, it's called make accessible, and it will run through all the standard steps. So adding metadata to the document, um, adding OCR, adding alternate text to what it recognizes as real images, but again, if you have all of those background artifacts and scribbles and so on, that's going to get really messy really fast if you don't clean them up first. And further down on the tools menu, there is, uh, pardon me, there's also just an accessibility menu. And you can, this is where you can run an accessibility check. So if I run a check at this point, I haven't really gone through and done all my homework in this document yet, but I can click start checking. And it will list all of these extremely I shouldn't say extremely, all of these very uh, detailed issues, that problems with your document. So we can see here that I, I haven't chosen a language that this document would be read in. I haven't given the document a title. Um, I haven't added alternate text yet to images. So this is a really good way to improve your rigor and your understanding of, um, of the the kinds of things that people who need documents in alternate formats might benefit from because it, it's really it's just so exquisitely detailed um, and I I was practicing last night on the final version of this particular PDF and I, I had to run this checker maybe a dozen times it, it always picks up a little something or other um, and luckily uh, it, even though it can get quite complicated like these are tags that are missing from elements of the document if you right click on any piece of this accessibility checker, you can ask it to explain the rule and it will bounce you over to the online help for Adobe Acrobat, which is, again, tremendously detailed, even more detailed than the accessibility checker itself. So if you want to get your skills up in terms of making documents accessible, this is a really good way to jump in the deep end if you're ready and, uh, and, and just learn how to help more people in your institution. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point. I can't even see Skype. I've got so much stuff up on the screen here. <laughs> uh, so let's see, questions. Is, can you please show to answer, how to insert the alt text for images? Oh yeah, sure, I'll do that before we finish up. I would be happy to. Okay, so uh, let's see, there's a few ways that you can add uh, there's a few ways that it works. So the easiest way, I think, is probably to go into this. Uh, it, you can go into the accessibility checker, or you go down to the uh, the reading order. Um, let's see, page two. Let's see. It's hard because I, I didn't finish this document where I was just giving you a demo, so I just have to figure out what the best spot is to show you where to do the editing. And it might be back up in the accessibility checker. Let's see show and content panel so if we so there's this um in the left hand menu one of the options so we have the thumbnails and tags and so on one of the options as a tab is content and if you run through content um, it'll actually uh, you, it'll highlight things as you click on them so you can figure out which image is what so 
right now I have image 220 uh, with the 1000 height of 648 highlighted here. And I should be able to uh, go into properties. And from properties, I can actually, maybe this is the wrong one. Hold on a second. So this, this particular image, I actually had to add alt text in three different places last night. This is the problem with working from scanned documents rather than born digital documents where you own, in those documents, you can add the alt text in Microsoft Word, for instance, and you never have to worry about it again. It'll, it'll persist when you pull it over to Adobe. So I just want to make sure that I find the right spot and I'm not doing it because I, because I skipped some steps to show you guys the demo here. So. Let's see here. Why is that not coming up? It's funny. Okay, I'll try tags. No tags available. Yeah, the document hasn't been tagged yet, so that's the tricky part. Let's see. And yeah, it, it's wanting to invite me to add a text box, but I don't want to do that either. Um, if you like, I can um, I can send the I can send an actual procedure for adding alt text to to Cynthia and then share it with everybody because I, I'll just waste your time if I fuss through this because there are, there's like a, a content level alt text and there's a tag level alt text and there's alt text that you have the option of adding when you're going through and editing the reading order of a document and I actually had to make, I had to add them all last night in order to make the accessibility tracker happy. So that would be something that would take a little bit too long to uh, to go through at this point, I think. I, I, I was hoping I would be able to jump into it easily here, but it's not a good use of our time, I don't think. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything I, and I And I would love to hear from anyone uh, who's participating today via email. I'm happy to answer these questions on the fly. I, I work with this stuff all the time. It's just that on the spot, of course, it never works. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from in the room? And again, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it can't be underscored enough that it's always better to work with a, a digital document. You can use one of the tools that Charles suggested and work with a document in Word or OneNote and then convert it into a PDF. And a lot of the accessibility features that you add in those Microsoft applications, if you do them properly, they will they will persist into Adobe Acrobat and um, and they will persist into your end your end product as a PDF. Any questions online or in the room? It's really helpful. Thank you so much, Corinne. Everybody really liked it. <laughs> and you may, get, you may get a request for more. Uh, oh, I, it's so detailed. It, it's almost better to email me because there's just there's so many strange little finessey things, and it's it's such a complex and very useful piece of software. <laughs> <laughs> You may you may have upcoming webinar uh, invites. <laughs> sure, yeah, that, that, that would be great. Excellent. Well, thank you very much.